hey there, spend another day in Panama City with me. I just want to show you what I do to keep my stuff safe. If they don't observe that and I'm out of here, I'll go to a different place. The thing is that they didn't have a, you know, the ones that hang on the door. It's already out. It's been out since 5 o'clock this morning. It's going to be out till 5, 6, 7 o'clock tonight in the evening. So we got a whole day without water. I'm being told it's citywide. So I'm going to be out and about because in the hostel, participants get a little upset if you use the uh, pots and pans and dishes and don't do the dishes. You know, if you leave the dishes around, they get a little bit upset about that. So, <laughs> so I'm going to be out. I I'm going to see how the city handles the lack of water for a whole day because I'm being told it's citywide and so I'm thinking okay so I'm going to avoid conflict at the hostel over the lack of water but then this is Panama City by the way um, in case you thought I was still in Ecuador <laughs> but the thought occurs to me how does the restaurant keep its hygiene it? I hope they have some kind of backup water reservoir I mean you know, how do the restaurant workers, you know, wash your hands and stuff? I'm figuring out my way around the city really well. Foot. Part of what keeps being in a new place interesting is trying to figure out how to come and go on the public transportation. Sure, I can always jump in a taxi, but... And I have a fairly good command of what the rates should be. Matter of fact, I called one of the taxi drivers on one of his rates and he admitted, oh yeah, I just didn't know where it was or something. But anyway, yeah, coming and going, it's always easy to go, but then coming back on the uh, public transport as well can get challenging here in a big city like Panama City. It's a combination of buses and trams and walking. As you know, I prefer walking, but if I'm really heavy on my pack or uh, in a hurry because it's getting dark. I will jump on a tram, a bus, if I've got a lot of stuff to do. And in an emergency, I'll get in a taxi. Like the other night, I, time just got away from me. And Oh, by the way, that will happen in Latin America. It doesn't matter. Panama City, you know, people say, oh, you know, Panama City is, uh, you know, less culture shock. It's going to be easier to adjust to and that's partly true that is partly true but for example i was thinking yesterday you know and something that might take in the states like a couple of days to get done you might think well i'll just allow several days or a week or 10 days to get it done but it turns out even that is not long enough in panama city or latin america sometimes things will take you a month I know it sounds fantastic and phenomenal, but it sounds almost unbelievable. But I'm telling you from experience, you know, I don't want to go into detail. I don't want to bore you guys. I'm just saying that things that would take a couple of days might take two weeks, but it might take a month. <laughs> City is not for sissies. I don't think at any time I've walked less than two hours. And that's on a short walk. The shortest, I would say. It's not for sissies. It's not uh, like walking around the square in, uh, you know, in, in, in Cuenca, Ecuador or something. Like for right now, I'm walking from Balboa to España, which is about 20 to 30 minutes just one way. And that's just to get on a tram. But I'll hang out by España 
and then uh, if I want to go anywhere else, I'll get on. I'll get on the metro rather, not tram. But even if all I did was get on the metro and stick around right there, and which I won't, and then get right back on the metro and walk back to Balboa, that's still an hour, and I will have not really gone very many places. So, let's see, we got Casino Marbella right here. Burger King. I like to get a good view of, of it from my back, turn around, because that's what it will look like when I come back. Get a good orientation. Go right at Burger King. Nice and sunny morning. I really thought I was going to be able to get out and be at breakfast by eight o'clock this morning but what happened is that I uh, something that hasn't happened in in ages I slept in yeah I slept in I, although I, I still woke up in the middle of the night so I did lose time in the middle of the night but I fell back to sleep which is unheard of it normally doesn't happen and I guess I got my REM sleep so I'm feeling pretty good this morning although it's pretty hot and we have no water for 12 to 14 hours Hopefully we can minimize that and just kind of overlook it and once it's over it's a new day. But it'll be interesting to see how the restaurant situation figures into this. And you got your Starbucks. And this is one place where tall buildings are refreshing because they give you that shade this time of day when the sun's full on. Yet we still have a slight breeze, so that, especially on a shaded street, oh, that feels so good. Woo! Yeah, in this district, you don't really see a whole lot of people on foot. But there's plenty of sidewalks. There are some people, but... I might go back to the hostel and jump in the pool, but... I don't have a shower to rinse off the chlorine. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to st be stuck with chlorine for all night. So I won't go jump in the pool. So when you're talking to a taxi driver today, I notice they don't like it if you say turn left at the coffee shop or whatever, because there's too many of them. But they do like buildings like, well, Avianca or Tower Bank or whatever, Panacredit. Names of buildings they they are easier to, to know. So what's on schedule is I'm going to try to make breakfast. I don't know though. It's getting later and later so I might not make breakfast. But I haven't had breakfast yet here. And then I'm going to do some bargain hunting. You knew that was coming, right? Come on now. How long you been watching this channel? Hey, by the way, subscribe! Yeah. And here I am on Via España. I don't know if you can see the sign. And that took a whole 30 minutes. Not bad. That's better. So Via España, uh, this is the Iglesia del Carmen metro stop. And right next to it it's got this little area right here that's sort of an older section it's got a bunch of little shops where you can get some uh, tourist trinkets and Panama hats and you know things like that phone accessories there's a little mall right here and there's several restaurants right here So I missed I miss the breakfast, it looks like it's closing down, but the lunch is on its way. She said it was starting at 10.30. So this is the lunch, it just, uh, they just put the lunch out. So I was able to skip the rice because they didn't put it out yet, fortunately for me.
What I really like about this place is it's got a hot water spigot because I get to make my uh, ginger tea that I get to have with my meal easier on the or helps the digestion out. One of the pros and cons of Latin living is the constant on party music. No issues with the party music, guys. Not a complaint at all. Uh, some people might like a little variation, though, especially in the mornings between breakfast and lunch. You might have some really gentle music, and then after lunch we could start partying. So I'm going to go back here to see what's going on with the water. I want to explain to you in a minute why I'm being so uh, diligent about this water. No, no water. In this case, no water. The restrooms are closed. What well, makes sense, there's no running water, so I'm gonna ask them in case they just haven't opened them because we're early and see what they say. So I asked the uh, help and uh, they have confirmed that in fact the restrooms are closed because of lack of water. They were apologetic about it. Uh, I'm naming this video 12 great hours in Panama City because in spite of conditions I'm going to have a great day. So let's go uh, do some bargain hunting and see how the mall is dealing with the lack of water and see whether their public restrooms are set up for a situation like this. So I'm going to get on the metro here. It's easy to do from Via España. So this is going to be interesting. Hopefully it'll turn out because I actually have to go to the restroom, believe it or not. The hostel is uh, prepared. They, well, they prepared yesterday. They did the same thing we used to do in Cuenca. They just stock up on water. You know, they, they've got these 30-gallon waste baskets in each bathroom that they pre-filled the day before with water. And that's what they're using for flushing. But uh, I know it's not pretty, but that's just the way it is. I told you that I was going to uh, tell you about why I'm, I'm being so diligent to confirm what's happening with the water. It's because in Ecuador, the landlords, they will uh, bank on the idea that they think you're not going to walk around, and maybe you're not, and talk to the locals. And so they'll tell you that when the water's out that it's citywide, or the local internet provider, they'll, they'll do the same thing. They'll say it's citywide. So what I did is I walked around, like in Salinas, I, I walked around, saw a neighbor watering, her lawn after the landlord said the water was out citywide. In case you're going to call me on this and say, well, what if they were using their cistern? I asked her. I said, is that your cistern or is that the regular city water? She said, no, it's the regular water. So landlords and local internet providers, they'll do this kind of a thing. They'll say these kind of things. So you have to be, you know, on, on guard for that. But in this case, in Panama, the water really is out citywide. And we have confirmed that already. So, yeah, I, I had a local internet provider do the same thing to me once where they uh, told me that uh, he said the internet was out citywide, but I, uh, they didn't know that all I had to do was contact a friend in the, lo in the area, and they had internet, so. <laughs> <laughs> when I come down here, it reminds me of that song by the, uh, forget the name of the group, called Trans Europe Express from the uh, 80s. hadn't noticed though it's always a beautiful day in Panama 
that's my opinion. here see what's going on so the machine does not give change well the restrooms had running water I spoke with the attendant and he says that they have limited water so that for a while they will have water so it sounds like they may be on a backup water system where they sort of meter the usage where they just cut off the water after a while so that they can stretch out their reservoir Okay, well that's the skinny on the water. We weren't getting the wool pulled over our eyes. Just going to say that Saturday is the worst time to come to the mall. Yeah, that's what we paid when we first went to Ecuador eight years ago, but now they're way higher than that. Look at that, it's even less. So I almost thought I lost my dollar. I better spend it before I lose it. Two words why I keep coming back to Panama. Want to guess what they are? What brings me back to Panama? Two words. Okay, I'll give them to you. Culture shock! Yeah, I get culture shock, but not the kind of culture shock that is normally understood. Not that kind. I get along real well with, uh, I do just fine with, with the Ecuadorians. I, I get a different kind of, of culture shock.